Well, guys, I want to welcome everybody to the debut. It is the debut episode, the debut of a brand new podcast series that I'm going to be doing. It's called Coffee Chat with CT, CT short for Conservative Truth. And guys, let me just say this is I've wanted to start kind of like a show like this on on YouTube here for a while. And I've had the name, you know, planned out for months now. The thing was, is I was trying to, you know, figure out how, what the show was going to be about, what I was going to discuss here. These are going to be, this is going to be more of a long form type of show, uh, podcast, whatever you want to call this. Uh, but this is going to be probably going out weekly, I'm thinking, as of right now. Um, that could change as well, just kind of depending. Uh, it could be more than one a week. Um, sometimes it might be every other week. So we're just going to see where this all goes. But basically what this is going to be, it's going to be kind of a show based off like what you would talk about with someone at a coffee shop. You're sitting down, having a cup of coffee with someone, you're talking about life, you're talking about politics, you're talking about you know things in your, in your church, the faith, whatever it is, we're going to kind of just cover it all. So we're going to do a whole bunch of different topics here on the show each and every a single week. So I hope you guys are ready here for episode one. You know, if you if you got one, grab a cup of coffee. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. What I want to start out with, I want, is it hot where you guys are at? Let me just say this, okay. I'm here in Arizona. And my gosh, we're experiencing the hottest temperatures so far of the year, of the summer, really. And you would think, you know, people live in Arizona. Well, you should be used to it. You live in the desert. So we're used to 110 degrees, you know, basically it could be anywhere from May all the way until September. You could be anywhere over 110 degrees uh, at any given time. But uh, this week especially is bad because they're saying it's going to get up over uh, possibly close to 120 degrees. Now we don't get to that often. Uh, We've broke actually 120, 120 degrees here before. Um, but it's not like we do this all the time, but this just an extreme, just heat ridge is just building up over our state right now. You could forget about any rain. We haven't seen measurable rain around our state in quite some time. Uh, and, and oddly enough, you probably wouldn't believe so those who don't know about, uh, you know, Arizona, the desert Southwest, you know, this is our monsoon season. They call it our monsoon season or our summer thunderstorm season. And so this is where we get the moisture flow that comes up from Mexico and brings us our summer thunderstorms. Well, oddly enough, July is on average for us in the year, the wettest month of the year. Okay, the wettest month. So we're only about a week in and so far we haven't had a drop. Uh, And according to forecasters right now, we don't have anything on the horizon, which is very scary uh, because last summer we were extremely dry as well had our second driest monsoon summer season on record. And it looks like we might be on the same path again this summer, which I don't like because all the wildfires that go on here in the state, uh, so much of our state has just been torched by these fires, especially up in Northern Arizona, just all the acres that have been burned. It's not good, especially when you don't have good winters here and you don't have a lot of snowfall that can, you know, you get the lake effects and everything like that that run down into the rivers and fill the rivers and the lakes. So this is not good. So guys, add that with the, you got the extreme heat here. People are going crazy. Remember they said that the heat was going to kill the corona? Well, that wasn't the case at all. Oh, because Arizona's cases are skyrocketing. And again, it's like, I just, I don't buy into it all. These numbers, I don't believe them. I I, I just don't. And I came across an interesting article, article today. I was like, I got to talk about this on Coffee Chat. This is a great thing for me to bring up here. Over 200 doctors in Arizona sent a letter to our governor, Doug Ducey, who's a very weak Republican, by the way, if you don't know who Doug Ducey is. Uh, And they're actually telling him, uh, begging him to punish businesses more that do not comply uh, with uh, his new shutdown order that he basically put in place. Well, he's, again, we've shut down more businesses here in Arizona. He shut down, Governor Ducey shut down bars. He shut down gyms, he shut down movie theaters, he shut down water parks, okay? Uh, And these were all previously open. No, he had reopened things around May 11th, May 12th. So that only lasted about six weeks before the cases in Arizona started to go way up. And then uh, he panicked like everybody else does and put everybody back and locked it, which I don't understand because they say, you know, wear the mask in 75% of our state. He basically delegated 
uh, the decisions to go over to the you know the local state officials, the mayors, everybody to make up their own rules on mask mandates. So 75% of the state uh, voted to make them mandatory when you're out in public. So they say that's our best line of defense. And again, you guys know how I feel about the masks. Well, if they're our best line of defense, then why are we shutting more businesses down? That's the whole thing I'm talking about here. Is why are we why are we going back to the shutdown thing? We're, we're supposed to be past this. We can't do this. But anyway, these doctors sent this letter to him, begging him to punish businesses more that do not comply. Now, there's a story going around right now. Like I mentioned, he shut down gyms. One gym in particular here, uh, Mountainside Fitness. The owner there refused to close down his gym. He says, you know what? We've done everything uh, working with the governor. We've complied with the CDC guidelines. People in the gym are wearing masks. Uh, they're being separated out in the gym areas with the workout equipment, everything like that. We're, we just, we're not going to do that. We we were given these guidelines. We're following them. We did nothing wrong. And I'm not going to keep shutting my business down is basically what this owner said. Now, he was sent a citation by police. They came out, which is basically going to be like a $2,500 fine uh, every single day. He's going to court over this. They basically gave him uh, last Friday until noon to close the business down, to close the gym down, or um, they would, you know, seek a restraining order against the gym. Now he went and fought this out in court. It's only step one so far and the judge ruled against him. So this really upset me. Uh, They ruled in favor of the governor. They backed the governor's executive order telling this guy that he cannot have any of his gyms open uh, because of this, because it's a risk to public health. Again, here we go again, the public health with everything. It's always about what's best for us, right? What best for our safety. We're adults. We can make our own decisions. And that's not being done here. And it's not just with Mountainside. I'm, I'm bringing Mountainside up because it's like a, it's a huge story in our state right now. I'm not sure how much coverage it's getting in other, in other states, but it's kind of a big one here in Arizona. So I bring this up because it's local. But he says he's going to continue to fight, the, the owner here of Mountainside Fitness. And he needs to. Um, but the fact that these doctors said that you need to take stricter uh, more harsh punishment against these businesses. What do they mean by that? What do they mean? I mean, they're they're already giving this guy fines. Okay, are you going to put him in jail? Is that what's next? So you guys remember what happened in Texas with the uh, the lady that owned the salon there? They put her in jail. She was going to give it a seven day sentence in jail before uh, that story got all that national media attention, and even the, the Texas Attorney General uh, volunteered to take her place. So she could go back to her family. But then once it got up to the Texas Supreme Court, they realized, oh, we made a big mistake here. And look, that's Governor Abbott's fault in Texas. He's the one that uh, initially put that order into motion uh, that would you know, require anybody who defied that order uh, to go to jail. I mean, after they were fined, you know, that was the last resort, but she took it all the way there. She fought for her freedom. She fought for her right to actually keep her business open. And she was put in jail for it. So do these doctors in Arizona now, is this what they're saying? Are they... You know, are they wanting him to now jail business owners that do not comply? I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it. And another one said that if the cases don't get under control, that we're going to always be in this mode in the state where we're going to be in an open and shutdown, open, shutdown, open, shutdown, which it's going to be a vicious cycle that we're just going to keep repeating constantly over and over and over again. But no. That's the decision based on the governor. Again, I, I talked about this the other day when governor, um, if you guys saw my video, uh, blind guy rips the Texas governor for the um, the face mask mandate. Watch it. It's great. I went off on Governor Greg Abbott, who I liked, uh, but no more, no mercy anymore. When it comes to these, these governors, no matter if I liked him in the past or not, uh, if they are threatening freedom and saying stupid things, then I'm not going to put up with that. So I'm not going to defend them anymore. But um Back to Ducey, you know, he's essentially saying that, you know, if we're going to have to keep closing and open, closing. No, you're you're giving the virus the power is what you're doing. Just like I said with Governor Abbott in Texas, he's giving the mask the power because he said that it's the mask that determines whether or not we can keep businesses open in Texas. No, it's not. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I'm sorry. It, it, it's true. The mask is, does not give you any power. It has, it has, it has no power. It's rendered powerless. Jesus Christ has power. Jesus Christ is the healer. They don't want to talk about that, though. You, you, you're not allowed to discuss that. So same thing here with saying that, you know, with being open, shut down, open, shut down. No, you're, you're giving the virus power. People need to continue to live despite this. 
They have to. There's there's no other choice here in the matter. So I don't know what's going to happen here uh, in the state of Arizona. We're again, he shut down all these places. I think it's until like July 27th as of right now. And that could possibly be extended even more. And, and a lot of other businesses have just like even the in-person dining, although the order didn't specifically target the restaurants again from shutting down the dining. A lot of them have just done it anyway. They're just they're just complying and just basically doing it. I mean, I was out uh, at a cafe that I go to a lot and and I actually was there and overheard the district manager saying that you know as of tomorrow we're going to be closing down the uh, the lobby again. Uh, you know, we're not required to do it under the governor's order, but uh, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, people's health are uh, people's health. It, it's on the line here. And I just, and I was actually there. I got to actually witness this and I just shook my head. I was just like, this is the, the compliance, uh, the willingness to just comply and risk losing customers and losing business to me. It's just, it's, it's just mind boggling. And again, I, I bring it back over to the mark of the beast and the 666 and the microchip. And it, it's, I never thought, I, I never thought that it was going to be so easy for people to be manipulated and, and comply. They, I don't even think they're just going to comply. I think they're going to be so willing. They're going to be running to the front of the line to take this chip. When the whole new currency comes into play, when, you know, credit cards are no more, when cash is no more. I mean, they're already talking about that. They're already talking about the, the cash shortage right now and everything like that. So I think these people are going to be lined up. There's going to be, you know, they got the, the Corona test centers right now. I think there's, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be centers set up for you to get your, your implant, your chip taken. And people are going to be flocking to it. And again, it'll probably start off as being manned or, or start off as being voluntary before it eventually, it, it will end up to be mandatory. The Bible says it will. So it, it's, a, it, it's sad, really. It's sad for me to see these businesses that are just volunteering to close their business down, even if they're not being told to. Now, thank God not everybody is doing this. You know, there's only four states right now uh, in the country that are not requiring mask mandates. I believe it was South Dakota, uh, Iowa, Montana, and Wisconsin. But Wisconsin was kind of the one that surprised me because, you know, the other three, I, I get that. Oh, those are, you know, hardcore red states, but Wisconsin, it was kind of, but hey, good for them. I don't know how much longer that's going to be before they change. They may have already changed at this point for all I know with the way the news and everything is just, everything is happening so fast these days. So it could have possibly already changed. Uh, but um, the compliance is what is what really, really worries me here. So I, we're going to have to wait and see how this all is, shakes out. But guys, did you, <laughs> this brings me to the next thing. Speaking of compliance, the churches in California, the <laughs> governor, I call him governor. I may mean, should call him governor instead of governor Newsom, Gavin Newsom. I mean, call him governor, governor Newsom <laughs> declaring that churches are now banned from singing. You <laughs> what? No more praise and worship. You, you can't sing because it's going to risk spreading it, spreading the Corona. As the congregations are, are members are singing into a mask, yet that's somehow going to spread the corona. Guys, this is insane. This is insanity. California is becoming China. They are becoming China here. I mean, it is just outrageous. What is going on here? Okay, let me take guys. Let me take a quick pause. If you guys. You guys, are, if you're enjoying here the, the coffee chat with CT show, okay, please like the video here, share it with people, let them know about it, guys, because we're, we're going to make a playlist. All these are going to be stored in there for any episodes you might miss. If people want to catch the show, you know, subscribe here if you are new. Also, guys, if you enjoy the content, if you're enjoying the show here, if you enjoy the channel, all the videos I do, you know, think about supporting me on Patreon, guys. You could sign up for just as little as $5 a month at patreon.com slash conservative truth. I'll have a link in the description. It takes you right there, guys. I do exclusive bonus content on there. I do some podcasts where I talk a lot more about sensitive information that I can't really talk about here on YouTube about because they would probably ban the video and I would get in all kinds of trouble. So there's great stuff up there right now. Me behind the microphone, more uh, doing audio stuff over there. Uh, but thank you to everybody who's over there. Uh, right now. You guys are all great. So I just got to put that little plug in there for you guys. Again, if you're enjoying the show, you enjoy the channel, check me out over on Patreon again for you can, a little as five. You can do more if you want. I have a, I have a great uh, 
gentleman here by the name of Robert. He's a hundred dollar patron. Such a, a huge blessing. So I, I thank him for that and all the other patrons, by the way, uh, for being here on the platform. Uh, but again, you know, talking about California, you know, I did a story the other day. I did a video and there was one church, thank God, in, in Sacramento. There was others as well, but I was kind of highlighting this one. Uh, Lancaster Baptist Church, I believe, uh, in Sacramento, who did not comply. In fact, they were going to continue to sing and make a joyful noise unto the Lord because, as the pastor said, that's what we are required to do according to the Bible. We have the right to sing. We have a right to worship freely. The government cannot tell us how to worship. We're going to do it no matter what they say. And he's so right about that. We see, this is a time for Christians you know, to rise up. And I've seen so many Christians that are, have been so compliant with the whole mask thing and just saying, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But they're saying the same thing that the media is saying, the, the far left, uh, left-wing liberal. They're repeating the same words. And again, it's they're going to take that, you saying it's no big deal, and they're going to use that to get you to comply then with other things as well. As I mentioned, uh, not just the mark of the beast, but a vaccine. Because then you're going to be saying, well, it's not a big deal. It's a vaccine. It's good. It's, it's good to take it because it'll, it's going to protect people's health. I'm telling you guys right now, that's what's going to be said. Like they're telling you right now, just put the mask on. Just, and some of them are getting angry. Have you guys heard some of these people? They're getting angry. They're like, just put the... Wear the D mask, you know, they're saying the D word. Wear the D mask. Just put it on. It's not a big deal. Why do you not want to, do you not want to, you know, protect people's health? They're getting, I mean, they're angry. There's like a, there's like a fire inside him. It's like the devil is himself is manifesting in some of these people with the way that they're talking. But it's going to be the same thing with the vaccine. Mark my words. It will. They're going to say the exact same thing. Just get it done. It's not a big deal. It doesn't take long. You get the vaccine, and hey, maybe they, they say if you get the vaccine or something, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure you, you're probably still going to have to wear it regardless. I think they want to keep us in masks probably for as long as they possibly can. But something will be done to where they'll say, you know, this will be the new way of, of now making purchases, and this could lead to the beginning stages of the mark. So they're going to they're, they're going to un, unroll. This is going to be, you know, revealed here. I I truly believe and I, I need to advise Christians, uh, those of you watching this, uh, if you have been supporting the masks, um, and, and some of us just, we put it on because what are we going to do? You got to go into the store, you got to get some food, you throw it on really quick, but you're not happy about it, and you get your stuff and you go. But you're not, you don't support it, you're not behind it, you're not telling other people, just wear it, wear it, wear it, wear it, you know? That's not what you're all about. You know, I know some people that they will, you know, they'll have a mask in their pocket or whatever in their bag, but they'll walk into a store without one and they'll actually make an employee or some other, you know, team member, manager, whoever actually ask them or tell them that they have to put a mask on. So it's like they kind of go in there rebelling against the whole thing and they won't actually put it on until somebody comes up to them and actually tells them to do it which i think is i think is kind of funny um you know they're basically showing i'm not complying with this i'm going to walk in do my thing you're going to tell me to put it on then i'll put it on maybe no one comes up to you maybe there is i don't want to you know because i think a lot of you know people in these uh in these businesses are uncomfortable with asking customers to put one on because i mean geez we've seen some of these incidents take place where you've got these crazy customers that are screaming and yelling throwing things in the stores but and i think some of those are, are you know are, are people just you know planning this in advance and this is all you know a, a, a scam or whatever for them to you know get famous get their name out there or whatever but there i'm i'm sure there's cases where some of these are in fact real uh, and these people are losing their minds over this mask thing is so, um, but when it comes down to the churches, guys, like I said, you know, just to kind of put a bow on the church thing in California. If you're in California, you know, I would love to hear from some people that, and I, I have people that watch me in California, uh, and I'm I'm curious uh, if the church you go to or you attend, you know, what are they doing? Are they, you know, are are they enforcing this? Because I I want to know, I, I want to actually know the churches that are actually you know complying with this. And they're actually on board with it because for any pastor that would actually suggest that this is the right thing to do uh, by actually following the order and not singing, I, I'm sorry. And just, just my opinion, I can't really consider you to be a real pastor when it comes to that sort of thing because 
you're not following the word of God. You're you're following man, and you're you're basically having your rights taken from you. Um, and we don't even know what the consequences are going to be. They haven't even really made that known. What are they going to do? They're going to send the national guard in, start arresting people, putting people in prison who are singing and they're they're lifting their their hands and they're they're praising and they're worshiping God and. You know, they're singing the, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. I mean, what, you know, what are they going to do? I just, I, I fear that we're just giving up too much and we're not saying enough about this and making enough noise. If you, get, if you can have the protesters out there, if you could have BLM causing a ruckus and, you know, acting like fools, and I'm not saying that we need to be like that, like them, like they're looting and they're hurting people and they're being crazy. No, but I'm, we still have a voice. We can make our voices known. This is our religious liberty. We still have that. That isn't, the constitution, it doesn't get suspended just because some people have the sniffles. Okay. I'm just going to say it doesn't get suspended because of that. You don't lose your right to worship because of that. And California has been looking to put a lid on the church for a long time now. You trust me, they were just, all they needed was something. They needed something like this to happen in order for them to really, really put things into motion to try and shut uh, the church up because they don't want, you think they want the word of God to go out there? I mean, they had churches in California. I remember when they originally, when, when uh, Mr. Newsom had put out his executive order, the churches were like part of the last phase of reopening. I think they were like in, in the phase four reopening. What, then you had like, but you had other businesses in the phase two that like you would think that, wait, what? Like it should have been reversed. So this is insanity that, that's happening right now. And, and this brings me into my next topic. Don Lemon versus Terry Crews. That's right. It's time to talk about Don Lemon Versus Terry Crews. Don Lemon, he had Terry Crews come on the show. And again, I don't, on, on CNN, I don't know why any conservatives go on CNN. I, I really don't because CNN just it tries to bring them on there and they talk over them and then they cut them off at the end. But uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe if there was some people that were actually, those few people that were actually still watching CNN and if they caught this, well, then maybe, um, you know, they could see that Terry Crews was right. But Lemon basically brought him on the show. And, and I'll put a link in the description. If you guys want to check it out, I'll, I'll put a link to the video down there. You guys could watch it. It's like eight minutes long or something like that. The interaction between the two. Basically, Terry Crews was criticizing BLM and saying that they don't really care about all black lives. It's not about that with them. And then Terry brought up the fact that, hey, no one talks about the black on black violence that's going on in Chicago. All these shootings. You guys have seen it. These innocent little kids that have been killed because of this and yet the media has been absolutely silent about it they're not even talking about this at all and terry cruz brought this up with don lemon you know and and he said what what about their lives what what how come no one's talking about this and then he said that you know this he goes i i worry that black lives matter that phrase is going to turn into black lives better is what cruz said now he was defending a position that he had uh, last weekend, he had put out a tweet and said that he is on the side of good of the good people, he said. He goes, and that doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, if you're Hispanic. I don't care uh, what your race, religion, creed, and it doesn't matter to me. If you're, if you're one of the good people, you know, if you have your, your head on straight and, and you believe in equal justice for everybody, you're not into these extremist groups, that's the side that I am on. And what I thought was pretty revealing here <laughs> was the fact that Don Lemon, he admitted he actually admitted on the show during the interview that well, Black Lives Matter, it, it, it doesn't represent all of the Black Lives Black Lives Matter is, is, is about fighting against police brutality. He actually said this on the show. And, and, he, and he told Cruz, you know, if, if you're so passionate about the, uh, the, the black on black crime and the shooting that's going on in Chicago, maybe you should start a new movement. And, and you should put your focus on on that. And Lemon has the nerve to say that, oh, it's being handled in the inner cities. They they already have people who are working on that. No, they don't. Who's working on it? Lori Lightfoot in Chicago? J.P. Uh, Pritzker, the governor of Illinois? They're not working on it. 
if they're not careful, Trump's going to send federal troops in there to take care of it because they can't. And Terry Crews is bringing this up to him and he admits it. This is about police brutality. And Cruz is like, no, no, this is <laughs> it's police brutality. Sure, it's bad. That's not the main issue here. That's not the main issue. Don't say that. Do not say Black Lives Matter. Do not say that if you do not, in fact, defend all of them. Because no one's talking about this. And Lemon just, he, he glossed right over it. Because it was no big deal to him. He didn't care. All those other people are working on that. This is a, BLM is fighting for equality and for justice. No, they're not. Read their website. He's a liar. Lemon the liar. Lemon the liar. He's a liar. Go read their website. This is a Marxist group. This group is about a cultural revolution. This group is about getting Trump out of office. They are causing chaos and pandemonium on the streets right now because they want to tear America down. That is exactly what they are trying to do here. And Terry Crews was trying to bring that up to Don Lemon and say it. But as the exchange is going on, you know, of course, Lemon starts talking over and says, oh, you know, Terry, we're, we're, we're running out of time. We're running. I'm sorry, Terry. Thanks for coming. They do this with all their guests. Anybody that they bring on that's a Republican or a conservative, a Christian or, or whoever, uh, that's just what CNN does because they don't want them to say any more. Uh, so that, you know, the small audience that they have, again, if it is someone who's, who's watching that's a liberal, they might see what's really going on here and kind of see CNN is being exposed for the frauds and the liars that they truly are. Uh, so it was a very interesting exchange. Again, Lemon admitting, he's like, oh, they don't, oh you know, yeah, they don't, they're about police brutality. They're not about all lives, all black, black lives. No, it's, it's just, I'll put the link down. Again, guys, if you want to check this out, put it down below or, you know, check out the link in the description. What do you guys think about the show? Are you guys enjoying the show so far? You guys have some coffee. What are you guys having to drink? Are you having some water? Are you having some tea? Uh, what are you having? Some juice, some apple juice, some orange juice, some pineapple juice, some some grape juice. I, what, what are you, you guys? Let me know. Let me know in the comment section if you guys are enjoying the show. Again, please like the video here, guys. Share it. Subscribe if you're new. You guys can support on Patreon again uh, for $5 a month uh, at, at the least. Guys, if you like what I do here, if you want to support the channel, uh, it makes a big difference for me. Uh, so thank you again for that. Now, what do I got next for you? Oh, the schools. We got to talk about the schools. <laughs> is school out not just for the summer? Is it out forever like the song? <laughs> like, is it school out forever? That's what they want. That's what the liberals, the liberals are wanting right now. You're hearing all the governors now. And all the mayors are coming out saying, well, you know what? We were going to open the schools for the fall semester, but we, we just don't know if it's safe enough. We just don't quite know if it's safe enough. So, you know, you got in states like Virginia, which, oh, I could, I could rip Virginia. Uh, guys, I would I have to do a whole separate show on Virginia. Maybe I'll have to do it in a future episode of Coffee Chat with CT. I might have to do a whole episode on Virginia. But the governor there proposing this for the upcoming school year. You can have the kids either show up to school, actually come to the school twice a week, or um, they can do virtual school at home for four days. That Those are the choices that they're, they're currently being given. And, and, and I think that they have a deadline. They need to decide this. I think by the end, uh, it's either by the end of this week or by the end of next week that they have to actually make this determination. That's insanity. The kids should be in school. There, there shouldn't be an option of virtual classes from home. That shouldn't be a thing. It's been proven that it's it's safe for them to go back. Uh, it doesn't affect kids the way that it does with the older people. We know that now. Uh, President Trump was out talking about it today, in fact, saying that there's absolutely no excuse there is absolutely no excuse for these schools to be closed any longer. We need to get these kids back in school. He's absolutely right. But the Democrats don't want to do that because they want to play politics. They want to try to keep these kids out of school even longer. They don't want them to learn, and they don't want them to get an education. They want to continue to keep them out, again, all in the name of public health. I heard, I heard Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York, talking about this too. He was there behind the podium, and he was saying, you know, he's like, you know, we're not we're not quite sure on if we're going to reopen the schools. 
we'd like to do it, but we don't know for sure if it's going to be safe for us to do it. That's probably a horrible Andrew Cuomo. I usually can do decent impressions. I don't know. Maybe I can't do Cuomo uh, very well, but you know, he's another one. He doesn't know if he wants to open up the schools or not. I know here in Arizona, uh, they, they delayed uh, schools from opening, I think, till August 17th. They were going to open up sooner. They, they they typically go back here in Arizona a lot earlier than they do uh, over on the East Coast. I mean, even for me, when I was in school, we were going back, always going back in August. We were out in May. Uh, some of the schools here are on year-round. Some of them go back in July. They go back in this month. Um, but now it, things are being talked about again. This Now this might be changed again. They might uh, be implementing virtual classes even here in the state of Arizona. So uh, this is just... It's getting crazy. I mean, to to say that, you know, you might not have kids back in school again for like another year or or more before they're actually back to regular class. And you already know they're going to slap masks on these kids in the classrooms anyway. At at first, they're talking about, well, we'll we'll just, we'll social distance. We'll separate the desks apart and do what we're supposed to do. We'll follow the CDC guidelines. The CDC guidelines. I, I, they're again, they're meaningless if you keep shutting down businesses, if you keep shutting down schools, if you're shutting down, you know, gyms and restaurants and bars and all these places. Then what does it really matter, ladies and gentlemen? They don't want the kids educated. They do not want them to learn. They want them dumbed down even more because the more they're at home, the more they're gonna, you know, see what's going on in the news and the media. They're gonna see all the, all the the lies that are being spewed. Um, across these networks. They're going to put him down in front of the Disney Channel and have him brainwashed uh, with the radical agendas that are being promoted on there. They're going to be watching Netflix uh, being brainwashed by the junk that's on that platform. This is, do, you see what, <laughs> do you see what this is all about here? Do you see what this is all about? They want to go after everybody. Dumb the kids down. Don't put them in school. Close the businesses down. Why? Because you can collapse the economy. Collapsing the economy would mean you need some sort of new order, right? A new world order, like I had mentioned. This is the game that the Democrats are playing right now. And the fact that they think that they can win on this platform in November with Joe Biden? What what are they smoking? What are they smoking? If they think that they could actually win on a platform like this, I I have absolutely no idea. They somehow think it's going to work, though. They somehow think that they can play these, these political games, it's somehow, you know, and again, it doesn't, Joe Biden, someone's going to be pulling the strings for him anyway. No matter who his VP is, will probably be the, the, the true president, or the true presidential, you know, nominee, because uh, I don't think Biden's winning. I, I, I really don't. I, don't. I don't believe that's going to happen at all. I do believe Trump's going to get a second term, uh, but we do need to pray. Um, and guys, look, the decision should be uh, it should be easy. It should be a no-brainer. You you, you gotta and and I, I've been very critical. I'll admit I've been very critical of Trump lately. Um, I I have not agreed with a lot of stuff that he has done. I don't I don't think that he necessarily should have given power over to the governors to make their own decisions about shutdowns and stuff for the states. I think he really should have mandated that from the federal level because I know that he would have reopened business. He says no, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have this open, and he was gonna monitor the states that were basically abusing their power. And we saw all those tyrants emerge, if you guys remember. So I think something needs to be done now because as more of these states are going back into lockdowns again, we're just reversing course and we're just reverting right back to where we were originally in March when these shutdowns first happened. So I've been very critical of him, but make no mistake about it. This is still a guy who fights for religious freedom. He's trying his best to hold back the new world order right now. I don't know for how much longer he can do that. If he does get another term, he's got another four years in office, and then what's going to happen after that? So that's when it gets a little bit up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen from that point. So we do need to pray. And there's some pastors that say, you know, it's over. Don't pray for our leader. There's no president that can save you. That's true. Jesus Christ is the only one that can save. But he also does put and allow people to be in power for his perfect reason, for his prophetic timing, for what he has planned for not just our country, but for the entire world. He uses people. Remember King Cyrus in the Bible, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he, God used people. He used people that you didn't think could be used. He used Moses. You know, he used Noah. I mean, you look at the disciples that Jesus was with. You know, these were not perfect people. God did not select perfect people. You know, he uses you for who you are. You know, you're, he uses you, you're, he molds you. We don't need to be perfect in order for him to be able to use us. And that's what we see with Trump right now. So, 
And no way do I support that, you know, just giving up altogether. Oh, just let America go down. Who cares? Jesus is coming back anyway. We still, we still have a fight. There's still a missionary. It's still to reach the lost. It's still to reach souls for Christ. And that's what we need to be doing. So pray for your leaders. The Bible says to do it, you know, both Republican and Democrat. I mean, the de because we even saw a, a Democrat a member in the House last year, I believe it was, or it was, it was earlier this year, um, that uh, actually switched parties. He went from Democrat to Republican because he saw it was during the impeachment trial, I think it was, uh, when everything that was going, he's like, I can't, I, I can't get behind this anymore. He's like, it's the Democrat party that left me. So people are opening up their eyes. They're waking up to the things that are going on out there, guys. And that's what we need to do. We need to wake people up to the things of the Lord. We need to wake people up to the things of Christ. We need to get people saved. A lot of people out there are not saved right now. Um, and they're not going to be going to heaven when they leave this earth. So that should be our mission. We always need to pray for the president. But guys, let me end up. Let me end. We're going to, maybe we'll end. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But this is my last major topic that I want to talk about here. Kaylee McEnany. Do you guys like this girl? Kaylee McEnany. This girl is a star. You want to talk about a White House press secretary. Uh, in my opinion, she is the best White House press secretary uh, that Trump has had since uh, he took office. Now, I know this is like the fourth one, I think, and it's just the first term, but she is she is great. You know, I, I kind of like Sarah Sanders, you know, a, a little bit. You know, she got kind of beat up a little bit, but she, she was kind of tough. But Kaylee is just, she comes in prepared. She comes in ready to swing at these people, um, and she brings them facts. I mean, she just... She nails them. She like she, she does these. I call her mic drops, where she's she's at the podium and she's taking questions. But she's done. She's done. Like she she's got her last shot. She takes her last shot at the press, and then she's out of there. She leaves the room, and they're all left like ooh, and they're crying. You know, they get their feelings hurt by her. You know, um, but who we had? We had Spicer in there. I said we had Huckabee Sanders. We had Stephanie Grisham, which she was she wasn't there very long at all. In fact, I think she only served as press secretary for like a couple of months before she was reassigned. Um, I think she's doing something with Melania Trump now, like being her press secretary. She moved into another area in the White House. I forgot exactly what her new role was. But that was also at a time where Trump had kind of stopped doing the daily White House briefings. So um, she didn't really give a whole lot of uh, briefings. So it was kind of like people kind of forgot that Stephanie Grisham uh, was even uh, a part of that. Which she, she was even the press secretary. Uh, so they kind of remember more Spicer and Sanders um, and now Kaylee McEnany. But I watched the other day, and this was great. You know, she was, she was, she was up there at the podium for like 25 minutes. Some of you may have seen this. Everybody's asking her questions about, you know, to Trump and what he said about the Bubba Wallace thing with NASCAR. And they're all asking questions about the Confederate statues and the monuments and why does Trump approve of this? And it just, they're making up all these lies. And, and, and she was answering these questions like four or five times. And she kept, and they kept hitting at the same thing. She's like, I've already answered that question four times. I've heard this is the fifth time I've answered this question. And, and she ended it great. She's like, you know what? Not one of you here. I didn't get one question on what happened with all the shootings that took place over the weekend with all of the children that were killed in these senseless acts of violence. Not one question came from that media uh, when it came to that. And she was absolutely right because they could care less because that's not important to them. That's not their narrative. They are not trying in any way, in any way at all, to talk about that issue. Because it doesn't fit what they're trying to do. The, it, it does not go along with the agenda. Talking about senseless acts of violence that are now taking the lives of young children is not important to them. These people, these kids can die in the street and they don't care. There was the guy in New York, it was, a, it was so sad. He was walking his daughter across the street He's the victim of, a, of, 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 of gunshots killed right there in front of his own daughter. The two children that were killed over the weekend, there was a seven or eight-year-old, there was a couple others as well. And she said this to them, Kaylee said, not one question on any of their lives whatsoever. The media won't talk about that. They don't believe that they have a platform that, that those people can't come on their shows and talk about. You know, Fox had some of them on, thank, you know, thankfully Fox is so-so. You know, some of their, I love Tucker, you know, some of their hosts are okay, some of them not so much, but um, at least they're willing to actually talk about it. You know, with Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, they're willing to talk about the violence that's going on. 
Uh, but Kaylee just put them in her in their place, and and she left the podium just like that. She's like, now one question. It really shows where you guys are at right now, and it's kind of disgusting. And she was out of there, mic drop. She's great. She's got a long. She could potentially get herself into politics one day uh, if she wants to. I don't know if she could run for something, Senate. Uh, I don't know, maybe even one day run for president. I don't know, but she's got a great story. She's a Christian. I've um, I've read up on her. I've heard her in interviews talking about her background, where she came from, growing up in the church, uh, her health. Uh, challenges that she had also growing up. Uh, Julie, just an amazing story. So you couldn't have asked for a better press secretary, in my opinion. I hope uh, and pray that she stays on after Trump, which I believe uh, gets his second term. Um, She could serve out the remainder of his term as the press secretary, and I would be completely fine with that. I think that would be great. So uh, guys, this world continues to get crazier and crazier by the day. Uh, I think we're good. I think we covered a lot. Did you guys enjoy here the first episode of Coffee Chat with CT? We covered a lot of ground here today for the for the debut episode. I don't know how long these episodes are going to be uh, going forward. I'm, I'm not going to set a time. You know, we're going to talk about stuff. We're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. And uh, when we're done, we're done. So I hope you guys stuck around through the duration of this. And because this is my first one doing this, guys, I really want to hear your feedback. Let me know in the comment section. Did you enjoy the show? Are you looking forward to more episodes? Maybe you didn't like the show. Hey, if you didn't like the show, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not perfect. I do the best I can. You know, I have a, I have a, a background in uh, radio broadcasting as well. So, um, so I love doing this. I love coming on here, being able to talk to you guys. We've got a lot of growth here at the channel lately. A lot of new subs. People have been coming over. Uh, and checking me out, and that means a great deal to me that you guys actually enjoy my content enough to actually want to watch more of it. Um, That's, again, um, I'm so blessed to be able to do this, to be in this position, to reach people, to talk about what's going on, to talk about the end time events, talk about the soon coming return of Jesus Christ. Um, It's crazy times we're living in, but it's also exciting times because we know that our Lord is coming back soon, and we know if we're saved, if we're believers, we're going to be caught up together to be with Him in the air forever for all of eternity so it's great news guys so again let me know what you think down below if you guys enjoyed coffee chat with ct what you think episode one leave me a review uh if you will down there guys um and again i will uh i will be back with more we're gonna be doing this again like i said uh probably weekly maybe every other week we'll we'll just we'll see how it goes um this is the first one now we got that one under our belts so we'll keep going forward here um you guys take care god bless each and every single one of you Uh, And I'll talk with you guys soon.